take on Heidi Fuller, Jeff Frederick. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, everybody, for the opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you for uh, the um, attention and the time. I know it's late. I'll uh, try to be very brief, although I'm a politician, so, uh, or an ex-politician, whatever you want to call me. Uh, I grew up uh, partly in Springfield. I was born in Fairfax Hospital. I went to Garfield Elementary School. Uh, for the last 13 years, I've been running a small IT consulting company. We're very small, always been, never been bigger than 10. Uh, we uh, have, didn't made me hasn't made me a millionaire, but it's uh, given me the flexibility to do things that I think are more important, like uh, serve people that uh, God's blessed me to be able to represent. And I was blessed to grow up in the great Virginia. I have uh, three young children. I think there's some of my brochures around. You can see a picture of them. I want them to grow up in as good a Virginia as I had the opportunity to grow up in. And that's exactly why I'm running. There's a lot to be done in Richmond to protect our freedom to build a better future for ourselves, for our families, to pr promote job creation and economic growth, to improve people's quality of life by addressing things like transportation, among other things. Many of the good things, as I think you, many of you are aware, that come out of the House of Delegates, where I previously served, to give you more freedom, to keep taxes low, to stimulate job creation, and to improve our transportation situation hit a brick wall in the State Senate. This redrawn 36th Senatorial District, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it, but it's a tough, democratic, gerrymandered, uh, solid, uh, toddy puller district, and that's exactly who they drew it for. She's been in Richmond for 20 years, and she believes, notwithstanding the mail she's been sending out lately, I'm sure some of you have been getting that mail, where she sounds like a tax cutter and a balanced budgeter and all that other good stuff. Notwithstanding that, she thinks everything in Virginia, everything that ails the Commonwealth, can be solved by raising your taxes. Um, I don't. I think you know better how to spend your money than government does. And frankly, Toddy's never met a tax increase that she hasn't liked or voted for. This new 36th Senatorial District, though, was won by Gore, Warner, Kerry, Kane, Deeds, and Barack Obama won it with 63% of the vote. The good, things, the good thing, though, is, is that uh, the half of the desk, the Dallas, the Oh, the district I represented in the House of Delegates was a 64% Obama district. And in my last re-election in 2007, I don't remember, know if you remember 2007, but that was a bloodbath year for Republicans. A terrible year for us. We lost a ton of seats in the General Assembly. But in that district, where just a year later, Barack Obama got 64%, I got 59%. I worked it, I worked it hard, and I know exactly how to win places like this. 37% of this redrawn senatorial district is Mild House District. 16 of the 18 precincts that I previously represented are in this district. And that's important to remember because a good portion of the part of this district that makes it so democratic are right uh, in central, uh, cent central, central Eastern Prince William County where I represented before, places where I've won before. We need someone who has a, a proven track record in winning in these tough places. We also need someone who has a proven track record on the issues. Now, Politicians can stand up here, they can stand on your doorstep, or they can stand wherever, and they can tell you anything that you want to hear. Candidates, particularly. But I've got a track record. I've got thousands of votes to back up everything I'm telling you here, everything that I've tell, told you anywhere else, anything that's on my website. I've got a track record, thousands of votes. So you don't have to take my word for it, be it on taxes, spending, transportation, your Second Amendment rights, life, illegal immigration, standing up for the family. I have thousands of votes that speak for themselves. I've got scores and ratings from the groups you know and trust on these very issues. And when I ran for office, I made some promises. And when I got in office, I kept those promises. And I think that's an important distinction too. Yesterday at somebody's door, somebody said, I'm sick of all these politicians. They go and they run for office and they make all these promises and they get in there and they do the exact opposite. Well, I'm sick of those politicians too. That's why I'm running for the state senate because the senate's full of them. Like, for example, 2004. 2004 was my freshman year. There were 12 freshmen in my house class. Of those 12 freshmen, Republican and Democrat, all of them voted for Mark Warner's largest in Virginia tax hike. I'm the only one who voted no. And there was a lot of pressure. And I was the youngest guy there, 28 years old. I was the youngest member of the legislature, and I'm the guy who's saying no to Mark Warner. Or in 2008, you know, we talk about economic development. One thing that I've tried, and I, we need to keep trying, you guys have heard of the BPAL tax, right? The Business Professional Occupancy License Tax? 
Well, that is a very regressive tax. If you're a business and you, you make a hundred a million dollars and you spend a million dollars, usually if you're an accountant, you'll know your taxable income zero. Well, the BPAL tax, uh, that's where the county comes along and says, actually, I know you didn't make any money, but we're still going to take some away from you anyway. But the most shocking thing is, and there's tons of this in Virginia, in, in the Commonwealth, tons of this. The most shocking thing about this is that the BPAL tax was established to do what? Pay for the War of 1812. But it's still there. We regulate mattresses in Virginia. Yes, we do. There's a little office in Richmond where they regulate mattresses. Why? Not me. But you're spending taxpayer money to do it. I'm not enamored with titles. I don't need new dicks. I don't need people making me feel important. But it is critical that we have people in Richmond who are bold and principled leaders, who won't forget their principles when someone taps them on the shoulder and says, we need you, one. We need you to take one for the team, instead of the people that you are paid and that you're honored and privileged to represent. When I'm down there, I never forgot who I worked for. That's why I wasn't the most popular guy down there in Richmond. But I never forgot that I worked for you. But we need people who will call a tax like a tax like. We need people who will hold uh, people of any political stripe accountable. And finally, people who will go down there and do everything they can to change politics as usual. I hope that uh, and you'll join our campaign. We have a website, votejeff.com. We have signs. We have bumper stickers. We'd love your help. Uh, any help that you can provide, we'd be grateful for it. This election could be so critical because it could have a, it, as Susan commented earlier, there's a thin majority, in the uh, Democratic majority in the Senate. If we, this is one of those seats that they didn't plan on losing. And if we win this seat, it's likely the calculus makes it very difficult for the Democrats to continue con to control. And if we win this seat, it could have a real, tangible, and significant impact on the legislature, and most importantly, from where I'm coming from, and hopefully from where you're coming from, on the future of Virginia. That's why I'm standing here tonight. That's what I'm working for day and night. And uh, I hope that you'll join us in our effort to make Virginia a better place to live, work, and raise a family. Thank you.